I live in Oak Park, just outside of Chicago, Illinois. See, we have an ordinance here where you're not allowed to put up a for sale sign in front of your house. So many homes are vacant here that they'd be absolutely everywhere if we could put them up. So, in order to ensure people want to live here, we make it so it doesn't look like nobody wants to live here at all. Thus, the no for sale signs. I live alone with a pet cat, an all black cat which I found recently is a rarity. His name is Calvin, he was the runt of the litter. This isn't really important. The story all started about two months ago. That's when I got up late at night after a bad dream and went out for a cigarette and saw my neighbour from directly across the street was sitting in front of his large, bright television which was facing right out of his window at my house. I didn't think anything of it. As days went on, I kept looking out of my window and seeing my neighbour just sitting there watching the TV. After two weeks, I came to the conclusion that he could very well be dead. It just didn't make sense that he was just sitting there, TV on, not leaving the couch for weeks. I could only see the back of his head, and he very well may have moved while I was at work, but knowing it was there, the light of his television kept me up at night, and for hours on end there would just be no movement. I came to the conclusion that I should call the police and ask if they could check up on my neighbour. I didn't know him very well. We met twice. He was an older guy. I used to see him shoveling snow or raking leaves and I'd have to help and he said no both times. He was a fairly attractive guy for his age and it didn't add up that he'd just sit there for days watching TV and not leaving his house. So I called the police and told them and they offered to check it out. I saw them pull up and couldn't help but watch. I was curious. And even though I thought that all that would happen was they'd call an ambulance or something and remove my neighbor's body. Not something I'd usually be extremely interested in watching. I'd grown so curious about what was going on over there that I couldn't settle for a simple answer that my neighbor simply died in front of his television. After knocking a few times, I saw them open up the front door and walk in. They looked around. One of them left the living room so I couldn't see where he'd gone. I could only see the one room where my neighbor's windows were. The one officer turned off the television and also left my sight. They both left and drove off. About 20 minutes later, I got a call explaining that the house was empty and my neighbor had moved out. They said a real estate agent had probably accidentally left the television on. I went on to a few real estate websites and, as it were, the house was indeed for sale. Anticlimactic, but at least it was a fair less morbid conclusion than I had expected. I was sort of embarrassed that my mind had immediately gone to death when it was really so bland and simple and I felt like a pretty bad person for actually feeling a slight sense of disappointment when I found out my neighbour hadn't died as I assumed. That was a reasonable answer, a total logical one. I had no way of knowing without the real estate sign up front, and I had no reason to question it. My neighbour had moved out, plain and simple. When I went to bed that night, it had pretty much entirely left my head. My bedroom window faces out towards the neighbor's house. For the last two weeks, I had been watching the television from my bed. It was how I went to sleep, just confusedly staring in wonder, slightly disturbed, knowing I could be looking at the back of the head of my dead neighbor. And since I had been staring at that television for the last two weeks, it took me a few minutes to register the horror when I crawled into bed and looked at the television, still on across the street. I didn't sleep very well. Every night for about a month and a half, I'd just see that television. During the day, it was on, 
I'd walk up to the house when I was feeling more adventurous and knock on the door, but nobody answered. I started smoking quite a bit in the loo of proper sleep. Every night, I'd walk by the house curious, scared and confused. I contacted the estate agent and asked if they were giving tours and she said they were not. So, it didn't get turned on during some open house. I thought maybe I was hallucinating that the television was never on, but the officer definitely went over and turned it off. So it had absolutely been on, at least in the first place. I invited a friend over two weeks ago, and after a little hanging out, I told him the story and asked, straight-faced and horrified, if the television was on. He said it was. He was clearly concerned for my health, and I don't blame him. So the only other option I could think of was that maybe a squatter had taken up residence in the vacant house. It wasn't common in the area, as far as I knew. There's very little crime or homelessness in the suburban area I live in, so it didn't really make any sense for somebody to squat here, but it was all I could think of. Last night, I worked up the courage to confront this squatter. I was going to call the police, but assumed the squatter had been there when I first called. I doubted it would do anything to tell them again. I worked it out in my head that as long as somebody else was living in that house illegally, it wasn't so bad for me to walk over and enter uninvited myself. Stupidly, I worked up this courage while smoking a cigarette late at night where the only light out was the light pollution over the east in Chicago, and the dim light of the street lamps. Shaking, both from the terrible cold weather we've been having lately, and from the nervousness taking over, I opened the door. I was hoping the door was locked so I could go back down on my sudden wave of courage and walk away without feeling like I was just running off with my tail between my legs. To my surprise and dismay, the door was not locked. I felt briefly confused, wondering why the realtor hadn't put a lock like they did when I sold my house. But I realised that if someone was squatting here, then it shouldn't come as a surprise that there wasn't exactly airtight security. Slowly, timidly, I walked towards the living room. I could hear the faint murmur or infomercials and see the moving lights and colours of the screen shine as I tiptoed, trying to make as little noise as possible. My whole body went cold as I entered the room. There was my squatter, a middle-aged woman, wrinkly, grey-haired and dressed like a homeless person. It at least added up. I was more horrified of the fact that I had to now confront them than at the woman herself. I stuttered a scared hello and she looked at me, and before I could form a thought she screamed the most hellish, horrifying scream I've ever heard. It was not the scream of a middle aged woman, it was demonic, deep and ear splitting. I froze up and my heart sank and my eyes widened and I stared, accepting that I was going to die at this screaming woman for what seemed like an eternity. It was an unwavering scream. It didn't sound like she was losing her breath after what had to have been a whole minute. The moment the initial wave of shock wore off, I just turned and ran. She hadn't moved save for turning to look at me as she screamed and I looked to make sure she had not gone up to follow me out, and she had not. I ran to my house. I considered calling the police, but I didn't want to explain the situation or risk getting myself into legal trouble for trespassing on my neighbour's property. And if they went there again and did not find the squatter, there was no question that I'd be seen as completely insane. I lay awake refusing to look across the street at the television screen, and my thoughts raced. Surely, it had to have been a squatter. She looked like one. She was clearly living in a house that wasn't hers.
She was probably a mentally unstable homeless woman. I decided the scream couldn't have been as awful as I thought. It was just the makings of a scared mind. I actually managed to get some sleep, shockingly enough, and when I woke up, I briefly didn't even remember what had happened the night before. What I woke up to was somewhat odd. My cat always sleeps downstairs in the living room on the sofa, but I found him, wide awake, sitting on my bed cleaning himself. In all my years living here, I have never woken up with him in my room. I pet him for a little and he went downstairs. As I began remembering the events of the previous night, I decided to go out for a cigarette, and on my way out, I found that my front door had been unlocked. I ran through last night in my head, and I remembered vividly in my frantic run home, ending in me making sure all my doors were locked. My memory is very rarely faulty. I felt my stomach churn, and my heart sink, and I felt a chill as I walked back upstairs to go to my living room. What I found would have been entirely mundane in any other setting. My television was on. I called the police to explain the situation. I called out of work and I'm spending the next few days in my friend's home with my laptop and my cat. <laughs>